Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. Today we're going to talk about a couple cool little tricks that I like to use to make sure that my photos are tack sharp, hyper sharp photos in Photoshop. If you do enjoy this video, and it's a quick one, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell notification icon to turn notifications on because as we've learned recently, subscribing doesn't really do much of anything. Without further ado, let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. So I always tend to stray away from tutorials like this because they tend to be quick and short and for some reason I feel like they're not even worthwhile to put out. But here we go. I want to talk to you about how uh, to get this sort of hyper sharpness in your images to just push them over the top in terms of being tack, super stinking sharp. I'm going to jump out to my finder and I am going to take this DNG file. It's just a camera raw file. Double click to open it up in camera raw and I'm not going to do anything to it. I can open it as a smart object. Uh, I probably will open it as a smart object. If you don't see that, hold down shift and yours will change from open image to open object. Again, I've changed nothing. This is just the image straight out of camera. I'm going to hit open object. Now just a couple very, very quick tips and tricks before we move into the actual sharpening. You can see the image looks a little soft, right? I mean the details don't quite look as sharp as they could be. Down here we see a little bit of chromatic aberration. That's going to be accentuated when we sharpen, so we'll probably knock that out in camera raw really quickly. Uh, but what I want to talk about before we even get to that is two of the best things you can do to ensure really incredibly hyper sharp images are number one, shoot with really nice lenses, uh, stuff like the Canon L lenses, some of the Sigma art lenses are really nice, Tamron has some really nice stuff, stuff like the Nikon 200mm f2 lens, some of the really high end Nikon stuff, most of the Nikon stuff are you know at or below that f2.8 number, going to be pretty sharp for you. And also shoot at an aperture that's favorable, shoot at f4, shoot at f5.6, shoot at f8, shoot at something that's going to really allow your camera to maximize the sharpness of the lens, and also shooting full frame, that helps a lot as well, you don't need a full frame camera to get sharp pictures, but full frame is definitely unto a world unto itself. So with that out of the way, let's double click on our image thumbnail. That's going to bring the smart object back into camera raw. I'm going to zoom in on him a little bit. I'm going to focus on that little chromatic aberration. We'll come over here to the lens correction tab. I'm going to choose manual and I'm just going to say purple amount. I'm going to move it up to seven or eight. You can see it's really helping neutralize that a little bit. I can move it over more toward the reds if I need to. Just make sure you don't introduce more discoloration. That's great. And we can hit OK. I'm not going to mess with too much else. And now we want to apply a camera raw filter to our image. Now, why am I going to apply a camera raw filter and not just go back to camera raw and apply sharpening? Well, when you apply a camera raw filter to a smart object, and by the way, if you didn't open your image as a smart object or if you don't have a smart object, you can always right click on it and choose convert to smart object and then you can use smart filters. When we use something like filter camera raw filter, which is what we're going to do right here, we can zoom back in on his face and get ready to sharpen this. When we apply a camera raw filter like this, we can take advantage of all the amazing sharpening tools we have here under the detail tab, but we also have the ability to mask that sharpening to apply multiple levels of sharpening across our image. So here I'm going to hold down my alter option key and drag the amount slider. It's going to make my image convert to black and white temporarily to really allow me to focus on that sharpness. I can change the radius a little bit, make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller. Detail, I always find myself turning detail down a little bit and then I'll zoom out a little bit here and I'm going to hold down alter option and mask the sharpening as well just kind of to all those white areas, right? You can see the, the white areas are where the, the sharpening is going to live and those are amongst all the details. We don't want to sharpen noise that's hanging out in the big blocks of color in our photo. Once I have the, the sharpening that I like, I hit OK. And now here, if I hit the little drop down arrow, you can see that I have a mask associated with my camera raw filter. So I can use that and paint sharpening in or out wherever I want it to be in the image. Now that we've done that, I'm going to zoom in on his face and I want to apply even more sharpening to really crisp this up even more. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And then here on the new layer, I'm going to use the hotkey command shift option E to merge my entire Photoshop document into this one layer. And then I'm going to convert this layer to black and white by hitting command shift U. That's control shift U on the PC. Next, we will go up to filter and we're going to choose other. I'm going to choose high pass here and we can go with something like 1.5. Maybe we go push it up to like 2.5, something with a little more radius. We want to be careful that we don't introduce too much haloing around the edges. So, you know, something like 15 will probably be, you know, a bit extreme, but it can be useful for certain situations. In our case, I think 2.5 will be great. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, command or control J. I'll shut off the top layer. Let's work with the bottom layer. I'm going to set it to the blend mode of soft light. And this immediately applies this very fine level of sharpening uh, to the entire image. And we'll reduce the opacity a little bit, maybe knock it down around 70%. Let's turn on the top layer 
and I'm going to set this to overlay, which is going to introduce introduce more sharpening, but do it at, at sort of a, a more aggressive pace. And I'll reduce the opacity of this as well. And now what we can do to help take away some of the crunchy feeling of these highlights, kind of soften them up a little bit here on our overlay high pass layer, we'll double click the layer. And in the layer style blending options, we can choose the underlying layer blend if sliders, hold down your alt or option key and click on the white slider, right? We want to target those white highlights and pull that slider back toward the left. And it's just really going to soften the bite on those, the, the brightest highlights in your photo. And it just, it's a very, very subtle thing, but it makes a real nice difference uh, just in the overall feeling of the photo. And if need be, you can reduce the opacity of both of those high pass sharpening layers as well. So what I'll do here, I'm going to duplicate the background layer and I'm going to get rid of the sharpening just so we can have a quick before and after version of this. I'm going to hold down alter option, click on the eyeball. There's before we applied the sharpening. There's after we applied the sharpening. So it makes a huge difference and we have this massive level of sharpening now. Uh, but like I said at the beginning of the video, you really want to start out with an image that's remotely or relatively or better yet very sharp and apply your sharpening on top of that. Be careful not to over sharpen, but beginning with a sharp image is always a plus. Uh, but working with a technique like this will allow you to add really nice, really crisp, hyper sharpness to virtually any photo, portraits, landscapes, you name it, as long as the photo is in focus and there's not crazy motion blur, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. There is some hyper-focusing for you. So there you have it. A couple of little sharpening tips and tricks. Not much else to say for a little bit of high-pass filter, a little bit of camera roll filter, and some cool sharpening tips and tricks here in Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Got it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.